there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 1999 comedy American Pie. Now, before I get around to sharing more of my thoughts on this film, I would like to give a special shout out to Brock for requesting this review, as well as reviews of the entire franchise. And if there's another film, TV show, or topic that you would like to see me discuss in the future, feel free to donate to either my PayPal or to my Patreon. The link to both is in the video description down below, and I will try to get to your request as soon as I possibly can. Now, American Pie is one of those films that for the generation that grew up with it, it became iconic and it became, in a lot of ways, their coming of age movie or their quintessential teen sex comedy. Uh, what Porky's was for 80s kids or Bachelor Party was for kids uh, in the 80s or Animal House was for kids in the 70s. This is what... Um, the teen sex comedy was for kids in the 90s and in the early 2000s. And it represented a moment in time where the teen comedy drifted away from being cookie cutter, being safe, and being more in line with what teen audiences actually experienced in their lives. The raunch the uh, uh the edgier type of uh humor and comedy and for a f film that nowadays if you look at it it might be considered a bit tame or considered to be not really that shocking back in 1999 when this film came out it was a really surprising film because there really wasn't a lot of movies that featured teen actors or teenagers in these lead roles that was willing to go as far as this film did. And that's a big reason why it was such a huge hit. Uh, Universal wasn't even really expecting that much in this movie. Initially, they planned on releasing it in a dead month in January, but the there was a test preview for the film and it got a 90% approval rating. And uh, it really did well with a young audience, which was the intended target audience for the film. And so because of that, they decided to move it to the summer and the rest is history. And the film became smash hit, one of the biggest hits of 1999 and one of the most successful comedies in a long time. And honestly, if you combine the financial box office gross of all four of these films, it became one of the most financially successful comedy franchises. Uh, and you would think because I'm mentioning all of this and all of this context that I'm al already, I was already aware of the, the, the film and I'd already watched it numerous times, but that's actually not the case at all. Like I actually didn't watch the film all the way through until recently for this review because sex comedies weren't really my thing. Uh, uh, when I was younger, I was more into sci-fi and action and horror. Uh, I wasn't really into teen sex comedies that, that really wasn't what I was that enthusiastic about when it comes to cinema. And it's something that I definitely was familiar with. I know that American pie was definitely a thing. I knew it was very popular. Uh, I was aware of its impact on popular culture I had seen some clips of it, like the infamous pie scene, and I'd seen various different shows with different talking heads talking about the film and reminiscing about it. I knew about Stifler, and I knew about all this other stuff, but in the band camp thing, because that was, I remember back in school, like that was constantly referenced all the time. This one time in band camp, like it, to the point where I was like, I don't even know if I even want to see this movie because I've heard this joke so many damn times. I'm already tired of it. Um, but after finally deciding to sit down and watch this movie, I was honestly kind of surprised by how much I legitimately liked the film. I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was great. I thought it was great for what it was. I think it holds up fairly well, uh, even though there are some elements of it that 
let's just be honest here, haven't aged the best, but I don't think they've aged as badly as some people make them out to be. And it's not a film that I would say is the funniest comedy that I've ever seen, but what makes up for that is the strength of the characters, the performances of the cast, and all the other aspects of the film that just make it so sweet and 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 so endearing. And I think that's really what makes this film last and have such a long-lasting legacy after all these years is because of the strength of these characters and the re relatability of, of the plot and of what happens with the this uh, group of friends and now uh american pie is uh, directed by paul weitz and prior to uh, american pie he had written ants directed a short film and hadn't really done a whole lot uh directing wise so this was definitely a bit of a risk because universal was like hey all right we'll let this first time director take a shot at this film and I think the fact that you have a guy who's just shooting his shot, I think that really is something that makes this film special because you can definitely feel the passion and the immense amount of effort in every frame. And it gives this film kind of a, it gives it an indie vibe. It really does, despite the fact that it was released by Universal. Uh, it, it's a relatively low budget film. It, it only costs, I think like 10 or $11 million. And that means that it's not a mega box office, uh, 10 pole kind of movie. And it just provides it with a certain amount of charm that I don't feel it would have otherwise. And I think the fact that you have a first time director and you have a lower budget I think it adds to the authenticity of the film in a lot of ways. It makes it more grounded. It makes it feel like something that is closer to what teenagers at the time actually experienced in high school. And so in a weird way, the fact that the direction at points is not technically incredible or it looks cheap or it has these different moments directing wise where it, it showcases the limitations. It actually makes it more charming. It, it, it actually uh, helps the film uh, reach its targeted audience instead of um, doing the opposite. And, and I think it really does help when it comes to maintaining and really capturing consistently all the authentic and very strong performances by the film's excellent cast because it has this vibe of this is a hangout you know it's a hangout with the film's director and these young stars and they're just hanging out they're having a good time they're making this movie and there isn't a lot of pressure there isn't a, there isn't a lot of uh, expectations and I think as a re result of that it does it just creates a very special unique environment that in many ways made this film so successful uh, not only with audiences but with a fair amount of critics at the same time uh, it's written by Adam Hers, and I, I think this screenplay is definitely something that really makes this film click it, it it was originally titled east great falls high and then it was changed just to great falls until they eventually settled on the title american pie and the writer he was just a huge fan of teen comedies and specifically you know teen sex comedies or teen comedies from the 80s uh so much so to the point where he watched Porky's and Bachelor's Party as research for his uh, screenplay for this film. And that attention to detail, that that approach to uh, um, 
storytelling is a big reason why this script works as well as it does because he 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 took that and applied it to his generation and he didn't really have any pretension there's no pretentious nature to this script he created something that was not necessarily a commentary on society or anything of that ilk he created a film that was just a nice relatable slice of teenage life with a lot of elements of uh, teen sex comedies from the past and it just led to a very successful formula that a lot of films after American Pie definitely tried to emulate to uh, middling uh, uh, results for the most part. I mean, there were some films that probably maybe you could argue came close to capturing the same success, but a, a lot of the attempts to try to be American Pie didn't work out so well. And I think it's because you didn't have that same authenticity. And the writer really knew what he was he was doing, really knew what he was working with. He knew how to create these teenage characters and to make them relatable and strong and likable, despite some less than desirable traits for some of these characters. For instance, Stifler is, is your typical douchebag asshole kind of character. But the way that he's written, there are a lot of moments where he's put in his place. He's not a guy who's just constantly bullying everybody and getting his way. There are moments where he actually is taken down a peg. So it makes it so you can tolerate his character more because of the fact that he's not dominating the screen. He's there. He pops in. Uh, uh, for like a few moments, but the rest of the focus of the film is really on its core group of friends, and the the way that the writer writes these characters of Jim, Chris, Kevin, and Paul, it feels so real. It it genuinely does feel like the conversations that they have with one another. The, the various different moments that they experience with to get with each other and the pact that they make to get laid before graduation, it all feels very real and very genuine. It doesn't come across as forced. It doesn't feel like it's an instance of how do you do fellow kids when it comes to the dialogue or when it comes to their interactions. And... The script has a lot of moments where these characters are allowed to shine because of that and resonate more strongly and more deeply with the audience. And it's not just those characters that work so well. It's, it's the other supporting roles. Uh, um, Vicky and Jessica and Heather and um, Jim's dad, uh, Nadia, uh, Stifler's mom, um those are all characters that in their own way also stand out and also really add to the overall effectiveness of, of the film and the story. And the simplicity of the script and the simplicity of the story, I, I think, also works. It's not that overcomplicated. It's a group of friends who just want to get laid before graduation. And... That enables the film to have a lot of moments where you have different sort of sex capades and uh, and and shenanigans and and comedy bits and and moments of raunch and it also enables the film to have a, a, a deeper meaning at times too where like you can have a lot of the sex sex capade stuff and the shenanigans and you know the pale ale scenes and the gross out moments and and uh shock comedy like the scene where jason biggs fucks a pie but you can also have moments that can really flesh out these characters more and give them more depth because of the simplicity of the plot it allows there 
to be much more of an opportunity to delve a little deeper into into the story and into the characters and into their world. And that leads to some really poignant, strong, great moments like in the end where there's a genuine lesson that's learned, that there's more to being a teenager and there's more to life than just sex, that that's not the only thing that matters and and that you shouldn't have to feel pressured to to uh to get it done you shouldn't have to feel pressured to have sex no matter what your age is because there's so much more that's important in life and i think that's a message that rings very true when it comes to this film and i think in a lot of ways that's really the heart of of the the story and it's the soul and the heart of this script that makes it so special to me. It's not the the pie fucking scene, which, yeah, it is memorable because it is pretty uh, uh, out there and surprising if you you aren't expecting it. Uh, and I, I it is pretty funny just because of just how insane and absurd it is. But in all honesty, the moment itself isn't what makes that scene funny. The moment after is what makes it funny for me. The moment where Jim's dad is all like, "Oh, we'll just we'll just tell your mom that we ate it all." <laughs> like, you know, like that that's the moment that that really makes that scene hilarious to me. And those moments are really the the funnier uh, bits in, in in the film for me. Uh, is is the moments after the gross out uh, scene or, or or just certain lines of dialogue between characters. And yes, I know there is the elephant in the room, which is the Nadia scene where she's being recorded with the webcam. And during the post Me Too movement, this is very uh, uh, controversial. Shan Elizabeth herself has said that, yeah, if you look at it based on today's sensibilities, it is a bit uh, offensive, but she didn't have a problem with it then. She still doesn't have a problem with it now. She's even said that because of that scene and, and, and because of this film, she, for the most part, has a career. This is her breakout film. This is the film that made her uh, someone that, different casting agencies and different uh, people in Hollywood felt like they should take notice of. So she's always uh, grateful of this film for that. And I think that's kind of overlooked by some people when they criticize this film in retrospect. Also, a lot of the commentary, a lot of the essays that I've seen that talk about how sexist or how misogynistic or how offensive this film is now they take so many things out of context. It's not like that scene doesn't feature moments that really provide consequences. There are clear consequences. Uh, Jim is embarrassed beyond belief. Like the man is turned into an absolute laughing stock in his school because he decided to go along with this. So it's not like it's one of those things where there's no consequences. If there was no consequences for it, and uh, Jim just got to be with her, and it was broadcast on the internet, then I could get the criticism. But the fact that there are consequences for his actions, I don't really feel that it's that bad. It's it's because of the, the, the context. It, it's, uh, it's all set up so Jim can face the consequences of his actions. This whole scene happens and it, it, it arouses a lot of people and it arouses a lot of people in the audience and probably still does to this day because Shannon Elizabeth is absolutely drop dead gorgeous in this movie, but it wasn't really a scene that was just purely for, uh, uh, sex and sex appeal. It, 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 there was more to it than that. It was, it was, it was set up so a lesson could be learned and it was set up so you could bring in Allison Hannigan's character, Michelle, 
and have her be involved with the film and ultimately be a key part of the franchise going forward because she was the only one that was willing to give Jim a chance after everything that happened with Nadia and with this internet broadcast. And if you look at the script, there's a lot of moments in the movie where these characters face the consequences. They, other than maybe Stifler, everyone gets uh, 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 their just desserts, so to speak, for their actions. Finch gets his comeuppance thanks to Stifler. Uh, when he's trying to just spread these rumors that he's such a cool guy and he's this and that and Stifler puts him in his place. Uh, you have the stuff with Kevin and, and then what's going on with him. And there's all, all, all of these different sort of moments throughout the story and throughout the script where these four core characters, they decide to, to try to, take advantage of other people or do certain things so they can succeed and, and, and get laid, but they fail. And ultimately what they realize is what's really important. You know, with Oz, he realizes that what's really important is his relationship with Heather and, and, and not necessarily scoring with her, but being with her. In a, in a much more close and 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 uh, meaningful uh, and heartfelt way, and Jim realizes that yeah, you know, it, it's it, it's it might it would be nice to get laid, but there you know that's not the only thing that matters. And he ultimately does get laid by Michelle, but it's very awkward and it's not necessarily. Uh, as uh, uh, romantic or as perfect as he might have envisioned in his head. And that's that's a reality for a lot of teens and for a lot of people when it comes to their first time. And the stuff and then you have with Finch, which that whole thing, yeah, that's very weird. You know, and the, the Mrs. Robinson, the graduate kind of thing where he bangs uh, uh, Stifler's mom and it's all played for laughs, uh, and if you judge it by today's standards, it's definitely kind of strange, to say the least. Uh, and this film is really what popularized the term MILF. Uh, um, but it's such a small part of the script that it really doesn't bother me that much. Uh, it, it, it's, it's just a sign of the time, there's another uh, uh, bit that was thrown in there to shock the audience and create some shock uh, humor. And also, I mean, this is the era of songs like Stacy's Mom. Like, you, you know, it's like it, it was it was the kind of thing that was somewhat normalized back then. So that's another reason why it was there is because it was something that wasn't considered to be so taboo. Um, but I can see why some people might be against, uh, you know, that whole thing. Uh, but like I said, I don't feel that it completely uh, destroys the integrity of the script of the story by any means. Uh, there's just a lot of sweet uh, moments in this script between characters that, that I really liked. The whole stuff with Oz and Heather, like because of the fact that I was in choir and I was in musical theater, like that definitely spoke to me. Like I could really connect with that. And there were in my high school, trust me, there were a lot of babes. There were a lot of gorgeous, beautiful women that were uh, a part of choir or musical theater or wind jammers or stuff like that. I mean, you had people who were girls who were cheerleaders and also in the dance team, they were also doing that stuff. That's not the main selling point of the film to me. It's, it's really, it really is the heart of it. It's the, it's the overall message of it and, and just the strength of these characters. You learn to really like and enjoy being around these characters 
And I think that's what makes this film so endearing to so many people after all these years. And that's what I think is going to continue to make it an endearing film, um, despite some controversy. As good as the script is, it would not have been anywhere near as big of a hit without the right cast. I mean, Jason Biggs as Jim Levenstein is absolute perfect casting. He really pulls off every aspect of this character that you needed. He's believable when it comes to playing this kind of nerdy guy who's, uh, who's definitely awkward and he wants... Uh, bigger things you know he has high aspirations when it comes to uh his sex life but it, it, it it's it's one of those things where so many of these girls are way out of his league and you buy it you buy that this is a guy that is out of his depth and as a result i think a lot of young men could definitely connect with him and relate to him because they were like that's me. I, I, you know, I want that. I want those higher aspirations, but really realistically, uh, I, I would probably have to settle for the band geek, you know, that kind of thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. And this film really makes that clear. Uh, and Jason Biggs had a certain amount of charm about him too, that, it, that I feel definitely did come across with this performance in this movie and it was his first major big uh, theatrical film role like he had done some little acting bits here and there before this but nothing to the extent of american pie and what's sad is because of how good of a job he did playing this character he became instantly typecast and he never really got an opportunity to break out of that typecasting when it comes to future uh film roles uh, Chris Klein, he's not the best actor in the world, but his performance for this character of Oz works because it's not really about the acting here. It's about his charisma. It's about playing this guy who's a, in a lot of ways sort of a lovable lunk. You know, he's 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 a jock, but he's got uh, issues with uh, with communication and he's socially awkward and that's why he hasn't got laid after all this time despite him having all of these advantages physically because there's so many other things about him that just are a turnoff like he's going out to to women and, and telling them to suck him like that's just not that's not going to work and that's definitely not something that they find attractive and so i like that there was a different approach to uh, a, a jock like character like this that actually tore him down and showed him uh, be so ineffective in moments like that and then show him show a more i don't know if i would argue a sensitive side but definitely show a different side altogether that is the antithesis of the jock and i think that chris did a good job playing both of those sides of this character it was very vital to this character to work to have him play the jock type guy, the the all star lacrosse player, but also play the guy who joins musical theater and joins the choir and ultimately falls for this uh, choir girl in in Heather. And of course, you got Thomas Ian Nicholas, the rookie of the year himself, as Kevin, who in a lot of ways is kind of really the the leader of the group. He's the the guy who is the headmaster, so to speak. You know, he's the ringleader, and he pulled that off really well. Like he has a certain charm and charisma about him. He's always had that, and he didn't lose it here. And you really did buy his his um, his plight. Like he, it, it was one of those things where. He did a great job making you feel for him when it comes to his girlfriend not committing and not wanting to, to have sex, even as shallow as that might seem, because sending all these messages and doing all this stuff, and it's they've been together for so long, and there's no payoff, so you legitimately do 
uh, uh, connected with him on that level. And I think Thomasine and Nicholas did a great job playing that role in terms of making you genuinely feel for him and not really consider him to be nothing but a selfish prick. The moments where he does showcase traits like that, it's just one of those things where like, oh man, you messed up and you, and you root for him to redeem himself. So I think with a, a lesser performance, you wouldn't really have that kind of dynamic when it comes to watching uh kevin as a character and you got eddie k thomas who plays paul finch and i would say out of all the performances this is a less authentic because it does come across as kind of forced and trying to be just really uh overly nerdy and and just really not like any r reality that I can think of in terms of an actual person in, in high school. Uh, but Eddie K Thomas still makes it work because he goes all, all out with it. And he, he still manages to make the character leave an impression that's relatively positive, despite the fact that the character is a bit incredulous. Uh, and Sean William Scott just plays a great douchebag. Like the guy Stifler is an absolute prick. Like the guy is a total jerk off. But Sean William Scott has a certain charisma and on screen presence to him that makes you kind of love to hate this guy. And there's a certain and like I said earlier, like there are plenty of moments where he's put in his place, so he doesn't really come across as that much of a threat. So he just comes across as like, you know, the lovable uh jerk you know that kind of thing uh the female cast is equally as capable as, as the main male cast members uh tara reed is vicky arguably i would say her best acting performance is in this as vicky uh natasha leone as jessica uh a friend of uh i, I believe vicky uh mena savari as heather uh, Shannon Elizabeth in her small uh, cameo role, but very memorable cameo role as Nadia, despite her really awful accent, which apparently wasn't her fault. It was uh, the producers who wanted something done in ADR, and it wasn't necessarily what she wanted to do, so that's why the performance is so off. Of course, Allison Hannigan, I cannot forget her as Michelle Flaherty. Um, just a very quirky... And, and fun performance. Uh, and of course, Eugene Levy, who was cast because uh, I believe the director or the writer was a huge fan of SCTV. And he just fits so well in this as the, the well-meaning dad who loves his son. Uh, and Jennifer Coolidge, a Stifler's mom, definitely a MILF. Speaking of MILF, you got John Cho in a very early role as the MILF guy. You've got uh, uh, Chris Owen is the Shermanator, Blink-182 make an appearance in the film uh, along with one of their songs, Mutt. Um, there's a Playmate of the Month, Stacy uh, Fusen, who's actually there in the crowd when Finch leaves the girls' restroom and she's laughing with everybody else. You got Casey Affleck, who plays a character, Kevin's older brother. Uh, uh, Tom, but yeah, the main cast is, is Jason Biggs, Chris Klein, Thomas Ian Nichols, Nicholas, um, Sean William Scott and Eddie K. Thomas. And, you know, with Tara Reed and, and Alison Hannigan and Menace have already thrown in, but everyone involved to me just has amazing chemistry. You really buy that they are close with one another you buy that the boyfriend and the girlfriend actually have real feelings for each other. You buy that the group of best friends are real friends and have been that way for many, many years. And it just makes the film so much more entertaining and so much more rewarding because it just feels so much more genuine. I keep mentioning that uh, uh, multiple times for a reason because it does it has a very genuine vibe and feel to it the overall film because of just how well it's cast and how well it's written when it comes to the characters 
and their experiences. It's not an impressive film, uh, technically. The cinematography by Richard Crudo, I, I, you could honestly argue, is kind of cruddy. It's not a good-looking film, visually, by any means. Uh, it looks very cheap. It looks very low-rent. It almost looks like a TV movie at times. The editing by Priscilla Ned Friendly, it's fine, but it's nothing uh, uh, great or amazing. The music by David Lawrence, it's pretty bad, Honestly, if there's one thing about this film that's pretty terrible, it would actually be the musical score. Uh, that, that score uh, was not good then and is just as bad now. Thankfully, the musical score isn't really in the film a lot. Most of the music is just uh, songs that they license for the film's soundtrack. And that is to the film's enormous benefit because if there wasn't a lot of those songs like that could be a serious detriment to the film because the score is so bad but it also has a good pace to it i mean it's only 95 minutes and it doesn't really uh, lag that much and yeah overall i i like it i think it's a charming fun film with a great cast and a good script that I think it's honestly a bit overlooked in terms of how well it handles so many characters and so many different experiences and how it makes everything tie together in the end and how it genuinely does have a good message is not just about getting laid and that's the end goal. There's a lot more to it than that. And I think its reputation as though the movie where the guy fucked a pie or the film with the controversial scene with Nadia being recorded with the webcam. Uh, it leads to people really overlooking aspects of this film that are, are very strong and honestly some of the best of its genre. And I think for the fans, they know that. But I think for other people... They, they aren't as aware of those elements of the movie. And I think those elements and other solid aspects of the film will continue to make the movie as delectable as a nice, warm slice of apple pie.